Good evening and welcome to the 2020-2021 school year here at John Adams High School. My name is Principal Jim Seitz and we are extremely excited to be with you tonight for our first ever virtual back to school orientation. Tonight we're going to combine our orientation of new students and freshmen with our back to school night along with our class meetings that we normally have with our students when we return to school. Things are a little bit different. Obviously this summer was a challenge, last spring was a challenge, and this school year will be a challenge that we are excited to be able to work with our students as we navigate this e-learning environment. Throughout the course of tonight, you will learn about different rules, regulations, procedures. We are also going to focus on the way that e-learning will work here throughout the corporation and at Adams. We will focus on ways in which we can help support your student emotionally and physically. And we will also make sure that we are an answering any available questions that you have. And you can do that by emailing any one of us at any point uh, throughout the next co couple of days. Before we begin, I'd like to explain a little bit about myself. Um, as I said earlier, my name is Jim Seitz. I'm the principal. This is year seven here at John Adams High School for me as principal. I'm a proud 2001 graduate of Adams. Um, and I look forward to uh, the work that we do each day here at Adams. Uh, my wife Molly and I, we have six children, uh, lifelong residents of South Bend. And as we take a look at this upcoming school year, we're gonna need to work with all of our students, all of our parents, all of our teachers, so that way we can navigate these unprecedented times. We worked extremely hard throughout the spring, throughout the summer, to ensure that we take our e-learning system and provide the best possible education for all of our students, including our IB students, our AP students, our ENL students, our CTE students, uh, our general education students, and make sure that we are preparing our students so that way they can walk across that stage and graduate someday from John Adams High School. We're gonna share with you some data tonight. We're gonna share with you our plans, and we're extremely excited as we enter uh, our 80th school year here at John Adams High School. I would now like to share with you a video that has been prepared. Uh, there's some members of the class of 2018 and explains a little bit about Adams, and I'll be right back. Adams has been the best home for me for the last four years. I've done a lot through the school and gotten a lot of opportunities and met a lot of my lifelong friends. And this is a fun time to have because you do put in a lot of work, so you should have a place where you feel comfortable and you can have a good time. I really like Adams. I've really enjoyed my four years here, and I think that there's a lot of factors that make Adams really unique, one of them being that it's very diverse. Like, you can talk to so many different kinds of people, gather new perspectives, and there's so many different groups also within the school that you can be a part of, and even with there being a lot of students here, you can definitely find your place. Before I started Adams, I was like, when I grow up, I kind of want to become a lawyer. Had no idea if that was going to be a thing. One of my friends said, why don't you join my mock trial team? And now I'm like, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to go try cases in a courtroom. So without the opportunity at Adams, I never would have been able to come up with that and see that that's where I wanted to be in my future. Uh, I'm in the IB program, and so what I've learned is you have to look at all these different perspectives, and I find it really interesting that there's always more than one story. There's always uh, different things you can take into account for uh, different situations. And so at Adams, I guess you just have all these different ideas, all these uh, new experiences that come together, and you really have a great experience here. I love, I love kids, every capacity. I love working with kids. Uh, I just love development, uh, of pers personal development, just seeing kids succeed is our ultimate goal, uh, overall student achievement. I think that if you want um, a more like globally minded way of thinking um, in terms of your education with like the IB program, but not even that, just the different types of clubs that we have here from things like um, like social action clubs, but also like people can start their own clubs like the Bible club or they can start a meme club and the fact that those are the kinds of things that you have here really show that you can you can kind of choose your own path here at Adams um, and if there isn't one that you like you can just create your own which I, I think is is really important for high school and a good reason why anybody would want to go to Adams. It's the best environment and you have so many people here who are willing to help you and take care of you even from upperclassmen to your teachers to your principals to other staff members inside the school. It's gonna be the best place to feel like home. And when you're here for four years or maybe even less than that, you need somewhere that feels like home. Adams, to me, is family. Thank you for watching that short 
video about John Adams High School. I would now like to explain the agenda for tonight's orientation. Uh, we're going to welcome you and, and provide a brief introduction of our administration. Uh, we will share with you our vision and our expectations for e-learning. Please know that tonight is going to focus a great deal on the e-learning portion of the school year. We plan once we return to in-person classes to have another orientation so that way we can explain all the expectations um, that we have for our in-person learning. We also want to discuss with you our quality teaching and learning and then ultimately what does e-learning look like at Adams as we navigate this new uh, way of education. These are some pictures that we'd like to show you from our last three graduations. Uh, we have been fortunate uh, the last uh, three years to have graduation at uh, the University of Notre Dame at the uh, Joyce Center. Uh, this was from 2018. This is a picture from 2019. We were able to have over 5,000 people there uh, to help celebrate our 400 plus graduates. This past school year, we had to shift and we had a live in-person graduation outdoors at Four Winds Field. We were very uh, excited to be able to share this experience with our seniors who many thought were not gonna be able to have a graduation ceremony. Uh, we were able to social distance and we had a really great way of uh, celebrating our seniors just a few uh, short weeks ago. Here's some data that we'd like to share with you on the overall uh, graduation rates and the attendance data of our school. Uh, we strive very hard to have the absolute highest graduation rate that we could possibly have. We always want to make sure that we're hitting that 90% goal. Um, we've been very successful in that over the last several years, and we uh, look forward to continuing that, that tradition. Our attendance data as well, and we'll talk with you a little bit later about how attendance is going to be tracked during e-learning, but we want to make sure that our students are attending. Um, we find that uh, attendance is the, one of the number one indicators of school success. You need to be involved, interacting, and be with your teachers in the classroom or in the e-learning site in order to have great success. Here's the current status uh, of, our, of our credits earned by the uh, so current sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, if you look at these numbers, our students in the green we consider to be on track. Uh, our students in the yellow are bubble students, and then the students in the red have, have quite a bit of work to do. Um, as we take a look at this, we always share this data with students. We normally don't share this during the orientation, but we share this during our class meetings. So that's why we're sharing this with you today. So students, as you look at this and you see that you are in the green, keep doing what you're doing, continue to work hard, communicate with your teachers. Students that are in the yellow or red, we need you to put in a little bit extra effort this semester. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to earn all seven credits this semester. So you could be on track for your core 40 academic honors or technical honors diploma or your IB diploma. Um, remember that you need a minimum of 40 credits in order to graduate from high school. And so we wanna make sure that we get as many students to graduate and again, hitting that 90% goal. Our school-wide focus is always safety. Um, safety is gonna be a little bit different in the e-learning uh, realm. And so Mrs. Uh, Dietrich later will talk about what safety looks like. We will then come back and talk about what safety looks like when we're in the school building. We want to make sure that all of our kids, our faculty, our administrators are all safe throughout the school day. We have a great relationship with our school resource officer, Officer Jones, and our security guards when we're in the building. Um, and they're also going to continue to help, uh, quite frankly, when we are e-learning. And so you hear more about that uh, as well with Ms. Campos and her explanation later on in this presentation. Along with that goes positive relationship building. We find that if we have good positive relationships with students, that helps with, with the safety of the building. And so you're going to hear me say a lot about building positive relationships. One of the things that I always stress at our freshman orientation is that you're not only going to build positive relationships with your teachers, but we want you to build positive relationships with each other. Um, one of the great things about Adams High School is that you're going to have friends that you don't even know today that will end up being lifelong friends for you, with you by the end of your four years. I had all of the seniors at graduation a few weeks ago stand up if they had met a friend who they did not know prior to coming to Adams and pretty much all 100% of our uh, seniors and our graduates were standing at that time. We wanna make sure that we're providing you with a growth mindset. Um, so what that means is that hard work, determination, and you working at something is going to help you and you can improve upon where you are with your learning. You can improve upon where you are with your standing in life. Um, you don't have to be fixed in the fact that you know, if you are getting a, 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 a certain grade right now, 
that that's the way it's always going to be. And so we want to make sure that you're improving, that you are um, improving your situation in your life and that you're being the best absolute student. You can. And then we're going to focus on your teaching and learning. So how does e-learning look? What does it mean? This uh, timeline was put out by the uh, Southland Community School Corporation uh, last week. Uh, these are the different phases. These are the, this is the timetable up until October 5th. As you can see, the first uh, day of school is August 12th. We will have all students will participate in e-learning at least until October 5th. On September 18th, the school board will do a check-in. They will take a look at the health data and they will be in uh, communication with the St. Joe County Department of, of Health. They will be in communication with our school administrators and then we'll make a decision based upon the health data of whether or not we can return to in-person classes. We will notify everyone at that point and we will make sure that everyone is very well aware of our plans for that. We also are gonna focus a little bit on our CTE classes, CTE programs, which I'll talk about later. They will be in person to begin uh, the school year. And I'll explain why that is uh, in, a, in a later slide. The biggest thing that you have to remember is that all of this is based upon health data. Um, we wanna make sure that we're keeping our students, our faculty safe. Um, and quite frankly, all of you students, you can do your part by maintaining social distancing, wearing masks, um, out in the community, not just at school when we return, but out in the community so that way you can return to school as soon as possible. So what does this specifically look like at Adams? We have worked very, very hard with our department chairs and with our teachers to come up with the best possible plan. We understand that last spring we took uh, an e-learning e system that was just meant for a few days and we turned it into a educational system for the entire uh, last quarter of the school year. This year, we will incorporate more regular live face-to-face e-learning days. Um, we call those synchronous learning, uh, you know, live learning, whatever you want to call it. But we have to interact with our students. We have to make sure that we are developing a plan so that way students can interact with their teachers, students can interact with, with each other. And so when we were looking at this plan, we use the following criteria. We want for each student to have positive interactions with teachers and students. We want to create a good balance between live synchronous learning and asynchronous lessons, which are lessons that could be recorded, um, it could be a, um, a project, it could be uh, work that the students are completing. And we also wanted to make sure that we were following the bell schedule each day so that, we, so that way we have continuity with what we're doing uh, from a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis. These live face-to-face e-learning days or these synchronous learning days uh, they will be recorded and put on Google Classroom. Um, there will be situations when um, a teacher may record a lesson from first hour and they have that same class second hour or fifth hour. And so they would put that on that same Google Classroom. So they're not recording necessarily every single lesson throughout the day, but they're recording the lesson that is uh, going to help each student. There are minimum requirements. So if a teacher or department chooses to, to complete more e-learning, face-to-face uh, e-learning days, they are welcome to do so. On the days that a class does not have e-learning lessons, face-to-face e-learning lessons, the class will have assignments, there will be teacher office hours, and we will work through that uh, on an individual basis. We will run a bell schedule. Teachers will stick to this schedule. And please keep in mind that e-learning is going to be five days a week. This is not uh, where we're going to go for four days and take Friday off. It's five days a week. What does this look like then in terms of synchronous e-learning lessons? So these are our live e-learning lessons. So on Monday and Wednesday, our English, social studies, and fine arts classes will be live instruction with the teacher in front of the computer where there's interaction. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, Math, Science, World, Language, and Business will uh, have our live lessons. And then on Friday, PE, Health, our Family Consumer Science, and our Industrial Technology, they will have their live lessons. Again, these are only minimum requirements. So if a teacher chooses to have uh, e -learning, live e-learning on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, if they're a, a, a math teacher, they will let you know that in advance so that way we can make sure that, that our students are participating. So if you are a English student, you're gonna follow your normal bell schedule. So if I have English third hour, 
on Monday and Wednesday, I'm going to have my English class during the third hour time slot with the teacher live um, on my Google Classroom, interacting with the teacher, interacting with other students. On Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm still going to have my English class during third hour. However, it will not be live. It could be a recorded video. It could be an assignment that I'm working on. It could be a project that I'm working on. It could be that I'm emailing the teacher with uh, during their office hours at that time. But you will be having e-learning all five days a week. These are the only days that the minimum, I'm sorry, minimum number of days in which you will have live e-learning lessons. Uh, a couple of things to note that on August 12th, which is the first day of school, we've asked for every single teacher to have all of their classes in the live e-learning lessons. Um, so that way our students can get accustomed to that immediately. So students, your seven classes will all be live e-learning lessons on the first day of school. And please remember, these are only minimum live e-learning requirements. We do have several teachers, several programs that will be doing three, four, maybe even five days a week of live e-learning instruction. So here's the breakdown of the schedule. We have our different phases. So from August 12th, which is the first day of school until August 21st, our students will only have class from 9 a.m. to 11.57 a.m. every day. We'll have short 21-minute class periods. Uh, teachers will have a live a, a lunch hour from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. and then participate in a district-wide professional development from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Please note, that certain IB, AP, and ICP classes, so your uh, International Baccalaureate, your Advanced Placement, uh, your, your uh, Advanced College Placement classes, they will need to begin teaching with a full day because of external requirements. Some of these courses will do that, and your teachers will let you know. So what we will do with that situation is we will still run this 9 to 11.57 bell schedule in the morning. We will take an hour break for lunch, and then we will repeat this schedule for certain classes starting at 1 p.m. So, for example, if I have Mr. Weaver's um, IB social studies class, and I have him first hour, I'm going to have him from first hour from 9 a.m. to 9.21, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to have him again from uh, 1 p.m. to 1.21. And so if there's other classes, we will have chunks like that. Um, so this is going to enable our students who have external requirements to make sure that they are still getting the most out of this e-learning environment as well. Starting on, Oct on August 24th through October 2nd, this could go longer depending on what the health data looks like. We will utilize a full uh, nine to four schedule. Students and teachers will have a 45-minute class period with 15-minute break in between each class. All students will have lunch from 11.45 to 12.15. Your schedules are going to say what lunch period you have on there. Disregard that for e-learning. Once we return to in-person classes, we will make an adjustment to have a different bell schedule, our normal bell schedule, I should say, that includes all four lunch periods. But for now, until you hear from us, this is the schedule that every single student at Adams High School will follow, and every single student will take lunch from 11.45 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. Our career and technical education courses, they have to be, they are required um, in, for, cert, for certain programs in order to earn dual credits or industry certifications to meet in person. So CTE students in our three-hour programs will attend in-person classes starting on August 17th at the location of that class. Here at Adams High School, the only two CTE programs that we have in our building for all of the students within the district is our CAD class and our precision machinery class. Bus transportation for all others and those included will be available and will take the students directly to the class site. Students, if you are self-transporting to your CTE program, 
If you are coming to Adams High School, park in the parking lot off of Mishawaka Avenue and enter the school through door five. If you are going to Clay High School, park in the back of the school and enter the, the school door through door 21. If you're going to Riley High School, park in the student parking lot across the street from the track and enter the school through door one. And if you're going to Washington High School, park, park in the front parking lot and enter the building through door one. If you have any questions about CTE, please contact our career guidance specialist, Mrs. Andrea Jeffers. Her email address is listed right there at ajeffers at sb.school. I would now like to introduce our administrative team here at John Adams High School. Again, I'm Jim Seitz, the principal here at John Adams High School. Uh, Miss Jeannie Dietrich, our assistant principal, this is her seventh year here at Adams. Miss Christina Campos is in her fourth year here at Adams as assistant principal. I'd like to welcome Mr. Kernard Robinson, who is joining us in our, his first year here at Adams as he replaces uh, assistant principal Mr. Chris Berg. We wish Mr. Berg the best of luck as he is the new principal at Clay High School. I uh, would like to introduce Mrs. Becky Hernandez, our IB coordinator, Ms. Tammy Brabitsky, our director of counseling, Mr. Bob Toll, our dean of students and athletics, and Mr. Ruben Medina Camacho, our bilingual specialist. You will hear from the majority of them later on in this presentation. We'd also like to introduce our wonderful counseling team who has worked tirelessly over the summer getting schedules the right way, working on making sure that students need to have, have, have everything that they need and are um, able to be prepared for the school year. Mrs. Gay Johnson, uh, she is responsible for students with the last name A through CL. Mrs. Kristen Gaines, uh, she is responsible for the last name CO through GL. Ms. Karen Hernandez, she is responsible for last student last names of GO through KN. Mrs. Karen Skierbeck, she is responsible for student last names of K-O through N. And our Director of Counseling, Ms. Tammy Brabitsky, she is responsible for student last names O through S-L. And finally, in terms of counselors, Mrs. Shelley Friel, she is responsible for last names S-M through Z. We also have Mr. Mark Geisler as our social worker on our counseling team. He will work with our students on any type of mental health uh, situations that they may have. He also works with students with our grief group, with our drug and alcohol prevention group, uh, our mental health group. And so we really appreciate all the work that he and all of our counselors do to keep our students safe. We also have our career guidance specialist, Mrs. Andrea Jeffers. Mrs. Jeffers' um, contact information is on this slide. I spoke about her earlier. And remember, she's the individual that you can contact with all of your career and technical education questions. And finally, I'd like to introduce our bilingual education specialist, Mr. Ruben Medina Camacho. Uh, we have over 250 of our students who are bilingual in our building, and he helps work with all of our students to make sure that they are on track for graduation and that they are learning the English language. I would now like to introduce Ms. Jeannie Dietrich for her part of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seitz. Hi, I'm Jeannie Dietrich. I'm one of the assistant principals here to help you with whatever I can. Um, I'm also here to speak to you about a few things. First, we're gonna talk about the discipline code. Uh, it's a little different this time of year since we are e-learning, but just wanna touch base on proper online etiquette. Um, the online etiquette pretty much is gonna be the same as, the, as what you, how you would behave in the classroom. Um, but just keep in mind also that teachers will be recording all lessons. Um, so please be prepared for those lessons and be up to completing work as completed. But because they are recorded, folks, that if there is an issue, we will have this on tape. So again, just, you know, just do act as you would, act properly as you would in the classroom. Also, another thing, unfortunately, I need to bring up right now is online bullying. I won't go into details, but please realize that this will not be tolerated. And if you are on the victim end of bullying, folks, then please make sure you take screenshots of this and contact your administration as soon as possible. As you know, we are really um, into having school safety. But although you are not in school, we do have some ways for you to contact us should you need to. Um, the one is student management, and there's the phone number, 393-5308. You can uh, talk to them or talk to any of your administrators in that way. 
But another uh, thing at your disposal is the South Bend tip line. If you go to the South Bend School website and you type in the search uh, line, the tip line, then you will get this website and you can then type in there what you feel you need to report. Um, I'm also going to speak to you about attendance in school communication. Uh, attendance, um, attendance is going to be based on the completion of learning tasks. Now, this first bullet um, lists all the different ways that a teacher will be um, using to get you um, a variety of learning tasks. So please be sure that you are up to the job. Uh, also, realize that attendance is going to vary just a little. Um, you will be marked present for your um, for your class prior to the end of the week, Sunday at 11.59 p.m. That's one minute until midnight. Um, that is, again, once all your learning tasks have been completed. You will be marked absent, however, if there are some learning tasks that have not been completed and turned into the teacher prior to Sunday at 11.59. So again, please make sure that you get your assignments in. If you have issues, email your teacher. We're here to help you, but you have to fill in your end of the bargain as well. Um, teachers will be entering attendance daily. Uh, if Let's say you don't show up a day or two, but then you later turn in your assignments, then the teacher will rectify the attendance. But please keep in mind, whatever you turn in will determine what your attendance looks like. Um, as far as school communication is concerned, here are a variety of ways that we will be contacting you. Um, there is a parent newsletter, newsletter, and then there are the all calls. You'll either receive all calls from Mr. Seitz or from Dr. Cummings, the superintendent. And then, I mean, there's just an, the whole list. Group emails, Twitters, Peach Jar, YouTube. There are different ways that we will communicate with you. But then finally, at the end of this presentation will be all the faculty emails. So if you have a teacher that you need to contact, there's their email address. Thank you. Um, next, I'd like to bring up uh, Ms. Campos. Ms. Dietrich, um, for your presentation, I am Ms. Campos. I, am, um, I have the letters G through N, and I'm assistant principal here at John Adams High School. Uh, my phone number is 393-5310, um, and I would like to talk about a couple of things. Uh, first of all, um, lunch. Uh, we do have feeding sites uh, through South Bend Community School Corporation. Uh, there are bulk meals provided four days per week with additional meals for the weekend. So please make sure you take care and uh, go to that, go to those sites. And you'll see that there are many sites available. So the meal distribution uh, is grab and go, and the meals are from 11 to 1, Monday through Thursday. And you could also get them from 2 to 4 for the weekend here at Kennedy Avenue. Uh, here are the Monday and Wednesday distribution sites. Again, this is all on the South Bend Community School Corporation website. And here are the Tuesday and Thursday distribution sites. As you can see, they are all over town. Now, the other two areas where I am in charge of is the special education students. Um, so if you have an IEP, uh, likely you'll have me in your case conference. And again, students and parents, if you have any special education concerns, uh, I am the one that you would talk to or Mrs. Cruzan, who's also available um, to speak with. Please don't hesitate to reach out and I can help you with that regards. And as far as ELL students, uh, we currently have about 260 EL, ELL students and Mr. Medina Camacho is available uh, to speak to 
And so am I. Uh, both of us are bilingual, and we can assist with anything that you may need in that regard. Uh, this year, we are working um, very strongly on a social and emotional learning plan to help you. Um, so I know there was a lot of struggles with mental health, anxiety, and depression. You are not alone. You weren't the only one. Uh, we talked to a lot of students, and they struggled mentally with so much uh, with COVID. But at this time, I want you to know that you can reach out to our social worker, which is Mr. Geisler, or your counselor. And again, if you don't know who your counselor is exactly, you'll find out in the slides to come, but you can always call uh, and we will definitely give you that information. Basically, Adam wants to keep you on track and we wanna stay in touch uh, with you as a student. Uh, we will be calling you. We will be calling all 2000 students, our paras, our security, uh, we will start calling as uh, soon as school starts. If you start missing more than, let's just say, three days, believe me, we will be calling you. We will call every number that we have. Uh, I will go knocking on your door. You know I've done that before. So I will definitely find you. I'll find your friends. I'll find out where you're at. But really, 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 we want to know that you're safe, that you're doing well. Um, and we're here for you, that's the bottom line. So know that if I'm calling and looking for you, it's only because I care about you and I wanna know what I can do to help you to be more successful. So please let me know if I can help you. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Robinson, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Campos. My name is Mr. Robinson. I am the assistant principal here at Adams. I have the pleasure of helping to lead the students with the last name beginning with the letter O through Z. My contact information is right here at the bottom of your screen here at krobinson2 at sb.school. And my telephone number reaches me directly in my office at 574-393-5309. Student parking passes. Parking passes will be for our Adam students that are juniors and seniors. These will be sold when students return to in-person learning. Once again, these will be sold to our juniors and seniors to be able to park on school property when we return to in-person learning. The cost for those parking passes will be $30. We will also have a virtual study table starting on September 8th, 2020. Uh, those times will be from 8.15 to 9 and 4.15 to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Those virtual study tables will be staffed by our Adams teachers and students. If you have any questions or you need extra help on an assignment, these are the personal office hours of your particular teacher will, where they will be able to establish a Google Meet format to be able to help answer any questions that you may have. Chromebook repair. Edison Middle School has a technology department that will handle all of our Chromebook repairs. The times for Chromebook repair will be Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. No ticket is required. Wi-Fi hotspots. A link has been provided by South Bend Community Schools that will show each and every area throughout our city where South Bend has established free Wi-Fi hotspots for our students. The breakfast and lunch reduced lunch forms. A link has also been provided. This is imperative that we have all of our students and families sign this family free and reduced lunch form. This not only offsets the cost for free and reduced lunch, but it also offsets the cost for any book fees or any other fees that may be associated with being a student in South Bend Community Schools. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any questions for me, as stated earlier, you can reach me in my office at 574-393-5309, or you can reach me at the front desk of the Student Management Office at 574-393-6059. Thank you to all the Adams students and families. You all have a wonderful day. 
Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Now we'd like to move on to the counseling department. We would like to discuss with you some important things as you start the beginning of your school year. By now, many of you should have received a schedule in the mail, uh, and hopefully it's a nice, full, complete schedule. Um, and many of you sometimes have questions about making changes to your schedule. I'd like to address that with you right now. We only are allowing schedule changes this year based on just a few criteria. One, if you are missing a class, then you need to uh, know that that is a reason to contact your counselor. If you still need a graduation requirement, or if you took a summer school class and you see that that same class is on your schedule, and if you did not have a schedule listed on your paper or mailer, then you need to reach out to the guidance office at 393-5315 to schedule an appointment virtually with your school counselor. As we begin the school year, we want to, number one, encourage you to um, have some resilience as you work through the courses that you've been assigned. And, you know, there may be times when you feel like, man, the schedule is going to be hard, but we want to encourage you to keep working and to keep learning and to do the best you can. We want to see you be able to earn the best grades that are that you can possibly earn. Um, and, you know, you'll be working toward your first report card here at the middle of October. And so uh, we want you to be encouraged to, to work hard and to follow the grading guidance. Uh, as you know, we did have e-learning last spring and we want you to understand that this fall, e-learning and grading is vastly different. We had a lot of flexibility in the spring for our grading policies. That will no longer be the case. And we will be asking that all students do the work that's expected that as your teachers give you assignments, you need to make sure you're working toward doing the best you can in each class. Uh, it's important to reach out to teachers and if you need support from your counseling staff or uh, administrators, please make sure that you are keeping your grades as your priority in working through um, this quarter from home. Some grading guidelines that you need to keep in mind you will be allowed to turn and work within one week's time frame from the original due date in order to receive full credit. After one week though, teachers can reduce your grade on any given assignment by no more than 10% of the overall value of the assignment. And if you have late work that you have not submitted, you can turn that in up to one week prior to the end of the quarter in order to have that assignment counted. All South Bend schools will be following this South Bend school grading scale policy. So keep that in mind as you're working on your classes to do the very best you can and to um, let's see how well you can do at home um, in e-learning. We're expecting that you are much more engaged and, and working face-to-face -face with teachers through your Chromebook on Google Classroom assignments and things like that. Um, and it's important to reiterate that the good grades that you earn today will equal opportunities for you tomorrow. And that that not only applies to, you know, scholarships that you could earn down the road and college admissions, but also directly within the high school realm, you'll be able to be um, open to take some dual college credit courses as you continue to work well in school, doing some of our career technical education programs, our AP classes, our international baccalaureate magnet. Those classes are so great for helping you be prepared for the rigor of college and opportunities that lie beyond high school. So we just want to encourage you to keep doing the best you can in school and to uh, make the best of this of this e-learning. Another important thing for you to, to know and be able to monitor how you're doing in school is to access your PowerSchool account. Uh, you know, Many of you have been in school already at the high school level, and so you're well aware of how to get into your PowerSchool account. But if you are if you are new to our school and you aren't sure how to access that, what you'll do is you'll sign in using your username, and your username is going to be your first name and your ID number. No spaces in between, just first name, ID number. And then for your password, it is your first name, your month, date, and year, and it's a four-digit year for that. So there's an example here on the screen that you can use to uh, experiment getting into your PowerSchool account. If you're unclear about your 
ID number, you can reach Mr. Cass. His email is mcass at sb.school. All right. Uh, we also want to just encourage all of our rising seniors. Actually, you're not rising seniors any longer. You are actually seniors and welcome seniors, class of 2021. I know that you uh, particularly have a lot of things that are, um, you know, happening here in the fall that it would maybe feel a little unusual not being here in person. But we want to assure you that we are here for you to help you navigate the college application process. and. Uh, we want you to stay tuned because we will be offering a virtual college boot camp in the near future to help you navigate all of the things that you need to know and access to complete your college applications and you know scholarship searches and things like that. So be aware that that's coming your way, okay? And more importantly than anything, we want you to know that your counselors and your uh, Mr. Geisler, our social worker, we are here to support you in every way. We recognize that this is, these are very hard times, and we want you to know that you're not alone as you uh, enter this, this first quarter of being um, you know, in school from home. We are here to support you, and we want you to reach out to us if you need anything at all. And at this point in time, I thank you for listening, and I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Tall. Thank you, Ms. Probisky. I'm Mr. Tall, Dean of Students and Athletic Director, and would like to talk to you about uh, you know, some of our extracurriculars. Uh, we want you to get involved. We hope you get involved. There's many opportunities for you here, and I'm going to primarily talk about the opportunities for you in athletics. But first, you know, we, we, we want to emphasize, you know, your number one goal here is your education, your classes, your academics. Your number one goal is to end up with a John Adams diploma. Now we want you to do as many other things as you can while you're pursuing that diploma as well. So please, uh, I'll be mentioning our, our, our website, johnadamsathletics.com. Go there and look at all the sports opportunities that are out there and uh, sign up, join up and, and participate in, we hope, two or three sports this year. As Ms. Brabetsky had mentioned, you know, uh, the academics are important. Make sure you're keeping up with the academics. You, you must be passing, passing five classes at the end of first quarter if you want to be eligible for second quarter. Uh, so if you're finishing up a season in the fall or starting a season in the winter, you need to be academically eligible. So please uh, stay focused on your grades and make sure you're regularly checking your grades so that you can participate. We are in an ever-changing world right now as far as uh, what academics, or academics and athletics will look like. So, uh, but, we, but we want you to know right now, we are starting our fall sports, our fall sports seasons. Uh, teams have been practicing, uh, but it, it's not too late for you to get signed up and participate still. But we are still taking registrations in, in, in all sports. Uh, to play a sport, to register, you know, one of the first things you have to do is go to Com. It's a different, uh, we replaced family ID from uh, from last year. Get registered. There's uh, like six different forms you, you need to, to sign up for and register and fill out. You have to have a physical. The good news is if you had a physical from last year, you can use it again this year. Uh, we, we still need to make sure we get a, a, a copy of it. Pay for insurance and sign up and do all that paperwork, but you can do all of that on eventlink.com. The best thing you can do is, is communicate with a coach uh, as soon as possible. So go to our website and, and uh, look up the, the, the different sports that are available. Coaches' contact information is available on there as well. If you still have problems, contact myself or Ms. Woolley at the athletic department. We will put you in touch with the right people. But we, we hope that you're one, whatever you have left, seniors, one this, this one year, freshmen, four years, whatever you have left at Adams, fill it with activities, get involved. If you haven't played a sport yet, sign up for one. Participation is key. The more you can do, the more you can put into this high school you know, career of yours, the better off you will be. So right now, like I said, we, we, uh, we are still taking registrations for our fall sports. If you're interested in a winter or spring sport, 
get a hold of those coaches. Find out what you could or should be doing in the meantime as well. And there'll be more information about those activities later as well. So again, go to johnadamsathletics.com. Go Eagles. Hi, this is Becky Hernandez. I'm the International Baccalaureate Magnet Coordinator here at Adams High School. My email is bhernandez at sb.school and my phone number is 574-393-5321. Just a couple of quick announcements here about the IB Magnet. We have updated our John Adams High School IB Magnet Student Handbook. Look, to, look for that by the end of September. We'll be sending that out to families and to students in addition to our faculty and staff. We have also updated our academic integrity policy to better align with the new guidelines that were set out by the International Baccalaureate Organization last year. Last week, we hosted a series of IB orientations. Those videos are available along with the frequently asked questions from the breakout room. Um, those videos are available at adams.sb.school slash I underscore B underscore magnet. For our ninth and 10th grade students, a quick reminder, if you're in the IB magnet, you need to maintain a 2.5 GPA, which is somewhere between a B minus and a C plus, and you need to be taking honors and advanced classes. The reason we ask you to do that is because we want you to be challenged, and that is the closest that you're going to get to an IB class in grades nine and 10. Uh, IB classes are challenging, and so we want you to do the same sort of work in grades 9 and 10 as you will do in the IB. For our 11th and 12th grade students, your GPA must also be a 2.5 unweighted. A reminder that our IB course certificates are available to any student who takes one or more IB classes and passes the assessments with a score of 4 or higher. Our IB diploma students will be taking 7 classes, including TOK. If you are interested in dropping an IB class, you will need permission from your teacher, from your parent or guardian, and from myself. So flex those communication muscles and talk to your counselor to guide you in the right way. In addition to that kind of communication, check your email daily, especially once October rolls around because exam registration is right around the corner. Exam registration will end at the end of first quarter, which is mid-October. So if you're interested in taking those assessments, you need to sign up for them. Finally, just a quick word about success and what that looks like. And this is not just for IB students, this is for everybody. Remember that your version of success is not necessarily the same as somebody else's version of success. So please don't measure yourself against somebody else. If you're doing better than you were yesterday or the week before, if you know more and can do more than you did last year, then I would call that successful. Make sure that you're surrounding yourself with friends who are going to raise you up and challenge you to be a better you. Follow your passions. Take those classes that interest you, that are going to lead to something in your future. Decide what your obligations are. Maybe jot them down. Figure out how to time manage. What are you going to spend your time on? And do you have enough time to do everything that you really want to do? You might have to pick and choose a few activities. If you don't understand, if you need clarification, ask your teacher. Your teachers are trained and they want to help. They want you to get the information that they're giving you. We want you to understand. Just ask for help. Speaking of help, if there's anything you ever need, all of the adults at John Adams are here for you. Please reach out. Have a great year. Thank you, Mrs. Hernandez, for the information on the John Adams High School International Baccalaureate Program. We would now like to speak with you for a few minutes about the John Adams High School Parent Group. The John Adams High School Parent Group is led by Mr. Joe Crimmins, a proud John Adams High School graduate himself. And he also, he and his wife have three children that have graduated from John Adams High School. Mr. Crimmins will send out email reminders, post on social media, and maintains a website that the goal is to communicate with our parents, our community members, and some of our students who are on as well. While we do not have regular meetings with the John Adams High School parent group, we will set up special events from time to time 
The parent group also helps with funding meals for our teachers during parent-teacher conferences, teacher appreciation week, and other special events. If you are interested in helping out with the parent group, please contact Joe. You can also email Joe at johnadamsparentgroup at gmail.com and he can put you on their listserv so that way you can receive all of the fine emails that he sends out. We also would like to introduce you to another parent organization, the John Adams High School Athletic Booster Club. The Booster Club works extremely hard for all of our students, especially our athletes. And in, in fact, in the past year, gave back $33,000 to all of our different athletic teams. Each year they hold sales for uh, spirit wear sales. They are, um, they have an online system of spirit wear sales. They have a sale that will end on August 13th with delivery by August 28th. All of their information is on this page. And we please, please ask you to support the boosters. And you can also pick up some wonderful looking spirit wear. If you have any questions, you can also email them at jhs boosters1940 at gmail.com and Mrs. Lori Camp, uh, she's also one of our coaches, she's in charge of the spirit wear. So please give them um, uh, some uh, business as well. A few final thoughts, uh, a few items that we still have to communicate to you as we are working with central office to finalize plans on how we can get some supplies to students that we know that they will need, uh, certain textbooks uh, students will need. We also are going to work on how we can set up school pictures so that way students can get IDs and we can also work out so that way we can have school yearbook pictures. We also want to speak with you at some point and, and introduce all of our students to the different clubs and activities that we have here at John Adams High School. Uh, getting involved in clubs and activities are, are some of the best ways that you can enhance your high school experience. Um, depending on some of our restrictions throughout the course of the year, we do plan on having these different clubs and activities after school, sometimes before school, and so we'll get you information on all of those different items. Finally, I want to uh, take you to the John Adams High School School website and show you around here a little bit, specifically how you can reach our faculty emails. Um, the website is adams.sb.school, and if you click here and go to under the About Us to the staff email directory, this uh, email directory is updated and does have all of our uh, teachers, uh, administrators, uh, all of our aides, all of their email addresses. So they're by department. You have the department chairs that are listed. You have all the assistant principals that are listed. So if you need to get a hold of any of us, including myself, uh, please look at this website at adams.sb.school. There's also lots of different information uh, about the school on our website. Uh, in, including the information that we've had about COVID, uh, athletics, all the different departments, our IB program. So please, please take a look at that. I would like to thank you for joining us tonight. And I would also like to recap for all of you. School will start with e-learning at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, August 12th. E-learning will take place at least until October 2nd and will take place five days a week. Our goal is to replicate the normal school day and week experience as best as we can. The majority of students will experience a bell schedule of 21 minute classes that will end around 12 p.m. each day through August 21st so teachers can participate in professional development to help with e-learning. Certain AP, IB, ACP classes will repeat the morning bell schedule in the afternoon on these days. Starting on August 24th, students will begin five full days of e-learning each week with 45-minute classes. These e-learning days will consist of both live face-to-face e-learning experiences through Google Meets and days that include projects, papers, assignments, videos, and teacher office hours. Regardless of the e-learning format, students will need to focus and log on to the computer for each class period at the designated time. Students must check their email and Google Classroom daily. This is extremely important as students will be communicating with teachers through emails. Please know that every single one of your teachers, paras and administrators and faculty members want to see all of us back here in person to take classes very soon. We know that in order to continue to achieve the results that we seek, we must implement this e-learning experience with fidelity. Please make sure that you communicate with us as we make sure that we will communicate with you. Please do not hesitate to contact me or any member of our team 
Each year at orientation, we have the John Adams High School cheerleaders lead us in a cheer and the singing of the school song. So we ask that each of you please get on your feet when the school song begins. Thank you. Have a great night and go Eagles. Go ahead and stand up for the Eagles.